Good afternoon everyone. Um, I'm coming to you today from my own personal garden to talk to you about strawberries. Um, those lovely little red sweet fruits that potentially everybody loves. I can't say I've ever met anyone who doesn't like strawberries. Um, and I want to talk about kind of planting them, looking after them and how to propagate them. When it comes to planting your strawberries, uh, you can plant them in various ways. You can do them in a hanging basket. Uh, as I explained earlier, several weeks ago, you can grow them in a hanging basket like tumbling tomatoes. They will be fine as long as you are watering and feeding them throughout the summer months. And they can stay in there until the following year. You can put them in tubs, you can put them in containers, or you can grow them on quite a mass scale as I do here in a big raised bed they will be fine. So it just depends on kind of what space you have, how you're able to grow them and so on. They are generally easy to look after. When it comes to growing them, you can grow them from seed, but they can take time to get to a point where they're a fruiting crown for you. Or you can buy the plants, or you can propagate them yourself. And I will show you how to do that in a little while. When it comes to planting them, they just need some general purpose compost, free draining, so again, they're not sat in water, so they do need drainage in your pots or in your hanging baskets. My, obviously, this raised bed will be free draining, it just drains away. And yeah, just think about how big they're gonna get. You can see here, this kind of corner area here is one plant, so a crown will get to a spacing of kind of like this. So if your basket is only, say, such big, you'd only ever want one or two in that basket. Don't think about filling the whole thing up with greenery immediately because those plants will grow, they will get bigger. Um, and as you can see, they do fill a bed quite quickly. When it comes to caring for them, um, it is good to know that obviously you have the crown of the plant um, and with strawberries, they will give you good fruit for between sort of three to five years. After then, you will find that within one crown, the fruiting will reduce, it will be smaller, not quite such good crops. And that's just a natural process with strawberries. They do age and they get to a point of not being, not fruiting for you at all. They don't generally die. I've never had kind of one die, but it will get to a point where it won't fruit for me so I need to replace it. Throughout the, there are two different varieties of strawberries. There are ever-bearing strawberries, so they are strawberry plants which will bear fruit for you throughout the whole of the summer. As long as you are picking them regularly, you're watering them and feeding them, they will bear fruit for you throughout the whole of the summer, and if you're lucky into early autumn. And then you have successional strawberries. So they are strawberries that will only fruit at a particular time throughout the year. They generally are fruiting from kind of sort of April, May into autumn time, early autumn. You can get alpine strawberries, which will generally fruit all year round and they can withstand really cold temperatures, uh, but they are absolutely tiny little fruits, but they really kick a punch if you've ever tried them. I recommend trying them. So once you've obviously got your strawberries, you've had your fruit in from them, they've finally finished, you're not getting any more flowers on them or any fruit, it's important then to actually cut them back. So getting your strawberries, your crown, and just cutting it back to a point there's about five centimetres of foliage left, so just a little bit. So chopping all the big leaves off, I've actually already done this, but I'm just doing one just to kind of show you because mine finished fruiting quite a while ago, but I just want to show you kind of how ruthless you can be with a strawberry. So I've cut this plant back, right back, leaving very little greenery on it and it will be fine. All that does really is just take away 
the nutrients in the sense that it hasn't got to keep putting all that goodness into these leaves. It gets rid of those, it opens up the plant, it aerates it, but it also then kind of tricks it into thinking, oh my goodness, what's happened? And then it will send off its runners. You'll get the runners come through. It is important throughout the growing season to feed them. So when they're fruiting for you, do give them a feed once a week. That's important because that kind of gives them enough nutrients to keep giving you fruit. Um, once they're finished fruiting, you should not need to ever feed them again until you start fruiting the following year. So as I say, you can cut off quite a lot from one crown. You don't need to worry about it. You're not gonna kill it. Um, they are very hardy plants. They'll withstand the winter. So there's no need to give them a fleece through the winter or anything. Um, they'll survive. Obviously, I keep mine here in a big bed. I have a large bed of them, partly because I love strawberries. Um, and also, most of the time, my son gets them before me. But there we are. As I said, once you've cut them back, they will send, then send runners. Now, runners are these long, thin stems that come from the main crown, a bit like this and it will send off these runners and they can be very, very long and you can end up with several little groups, tiny little crowns throughout the runner. And this is how you can propagate them. This is how I propagate mine because again, strawberries tend to only fruit for you between three to five years. After that time, they can start to not fruit as much. You won't get as big a fruit. Um, they get old, as it were, so you do need to replace them sort of every three to five years. So each year I tend to pot up the runners. And I don't know if you can see here, but here is one I took off. And this is a runner and he's already starting to show roots. So literally all I do is just pot that up. Just a pot, general purpose compost, put him in there push him in don't worry you're not gonna as I say you can be quite rough and ruthless with these things I'd cut the rest of the runner off and I will leave it and as I say there was another one on that runner just here a couple of leaves some roots so I'm just gonna put him in some soil as well and let him take up root in these pots once they've rooted through the bottom of the pot, I'll then plant this amongst all my other strawberries where there's a gap or where I know that they're getting a bit old and need replacing. Obviously, if you are gonna do this, if it's dry, just make sure your little runner is uh, fed with water and it's in the sunshine, um, but they will easily root. I have one here, I'll just cut him off, that I did a few weeks ago. And I, as you can see, his roots are now starting to come through the bottom. So that's taken about three weeks for him to get this big and to start rooting through the bottom. If you grow them in a big bed like this, as I do, you could actually just push the runner into the soil and he'll take root where you've put him. But if you've got them in containers and things, it's better to cut the runners off, pot them, separately then you've got your next year's year afters plants ready for fruiting and so on so that each year you get a really good crop of strawberries so that's how to propagate them you can grow them from seed um, but I find the seeds can take quite a long time to germinate and get going I find this is the most easiest quickest option to get more and more strawberry plants um, that you need when you're gonna feed them, I just feed them with general purpose feed, um, nothing fancy. Sometimes I use comfrey feed that I've made myself. And yeah, again, have a go at it. Even if you've got only just a tiny garden, just grow a few in a pot. Um, there's nothing like eating your own strawberries at all. They do need full sun. When it's dry, give them water. Other than that, they're quite easy things to grow. If you're wondering why I've got two plants here in my strawberry bed, these are actually some magnolia that I've grown from seed. 
These are about two or three years old at the moment, I suppose, and these are a magnolia are a plant that they actually won't bear any flowers for me until they're about five, six years old. So I've got a few years to go yet, but they're doing well. When your strawberries are fruiting, you will need to potentially protect them. Now I find if you do have them in hanging baskets, uh, they're brilliant in hanging baskets, partly because they are up out of the way from slugs. It's not so easy for Mr. Slug to get to them, and it's not so easy for the birds to get to them, especially if they're by your back door or somewhere like that. The birds don't tend to go near that because they know people are about and it's too dangerous. Whereas mine is a bit more susceptible to getting slugs, snails, um, and the birds, as you can hear them. So what I tend to do is when they begin flowering and fruiting, I put straw in between all the crowns. So this bed gets filled with straw. All that does is keeps the fruit off the soil so they don't go mouldy so easily, but it also does deter the slugs and snails. I may also set beer traps, which I showed you in a previous video. Um, you know, a good way of catching them is in little beer traps. So I would set a few in here to catch them. To stop Mr. Bird getting to all the strawberries, I would net them. So this whole bed would get netted and covered, a bit like my bed over there that has all my brassicas in to stop the white butterfly. I would cover this whole bed in a net. Uh, I only put it down, hold it down with bricks around the edge, just so that Mr. Birdie can't get in there and eat them. Generally, when they come near to the end, the netting comes off, as you can see, and if there's any left, then Mr. Birdie can have them. And generally, when there's no fruit, you won't get a slug here, because dinner's not there. You know, they're not interested in the leaves, they want the fruit. So if there's no fruit, they're not coming. So yeah, they're the two main things that are gonna end up eating your strawberries. So try and just deter from those. As I say, in baskets, it's actually quite a lot easier because Mr. Slug cannot be bothered to go up there and get them. And like I say, the birds usually are more scared or a bit skittish about going to try and get them off a hang on a basket. Whereas my bed is a bit more susceptible to them. So they're your two main pest kind of problems when it comes to strawberries. You can get issues with rotting of the strawberries. Um, so if you've had a really wet summer um, and the fruit's there and there's not much sunshine, then they can just rot. And that is just a natural problem more so with the weather than anything. Strawberries need a lot of water, moisture, but they also need a lot of sunshine and heat. So if it's sunny and hot and you're watering them regularly, brilliant, you'll have lovely strawberries. Whereas if you're having a lot of rainfall, not much sunshine, then it may be that they're not gonna ripen um, so good and they may just rot. But those are just things that are out of your hands. You know, it does happen some years. Sometimes as well, what can happen is they can ripen too quickly. So if you have far too much sun, they can ripen really quickly to a point that when you actually eat them, they are really tarty. So there's not that sugars and sweetness to them. They're still edible, but they will be really tarty and they make perfect jam. And that's what I tend to do. If they've gone a bit tarty and they're not as sweet as I'd like to have them, then you can make jam from them and things like that. But who doesn't love a strawberry? Next week I'll be here again in my garden, but I'll be in my front garden um, to talk about growing, propagating and looking after lavender, which again I find is another quite popular plant, shrub, that people have in their gardens um, for the smell, the colour and also for nature as in bees that love them. So we'll be talking about that next week. Thank you and luckily I have missed the rain.